Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. What you just saw us doing was making a little bit of foundational changes in our shed bed that you can see behind us. You guys have probably seen us make a few moves in this bed. Yeah, <laughs> We've been trying to get the foundation of it right for a little while and I think we've gotten the layering just right this time. Uh, so you saw us move in our Winecraft Gold smoke bush into sort of a foundational spot next to our shed at the corner. And I think this is really just gonna make it so much more balanced. And as we work our way around the bed with perennials and annuals, it's just gonna look so much better. We moved a few salvia around. It just looks a lot more interesting. So I'm sure you guys have missed seeing our garden, as have we. We have been gone for a long time. We got married since we last saw you guys. And then we had our honeymoon, which we shared with you, which was so much fun. Yeah. And when we came back to our garden, it was bursting with color. There was spirea blooming, there was salvia blooming, but then a lot of things needed to be cut back. So we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes to get it ready so that we can go in with our annuals finally. So there's no more perfect time than Pride Month for us to bring in a rainbow of annuals to our shed bed. We've got just about every color in the rainbow here <laughs> um, between our annuals and all of our perennials. So it is going to be bold, it's gonna be beautiful, and we've got a lot of color blocking going on. So why don't I step over here and show you some of the annuals that we've got for the shed bed. And then we're also going to be planting up annuals in the front of our house today. We've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna step over here and show you what we've got. All right, so if you've been with us for a bit, you know that we like to leave this little ring here for annuals. And we've done a few different kind of Supertunia vistas. Um, I think most recently we had Supertunia Vista Paradise, which was a really beautiful hot pink Supertunia. Um, and it actually came back for us last year, but by the end of the season it was on its last leg, so we went ahead and pulled that out. Um, and ever since then, this ring has been empty, so we're like craving the need to plant something in it. Um, and what we're doing this year is a little bit of an experiment. So we're going around town and seeing different like apartment complexes or even shopping centers. We noticed that um, they are planting their annuals in almost like a mini berm. It's kind of like built up with fresh soil and the annuals go right in it. And so we talked to a few different people in the industry and um, it's actually a really good practice. So we're trying it this year. So you just saw us bring in some raised bed mix. Um, we used the brand Kellogg. Now, I don't know if I would recommend that because it does look like it has perlite in it, which is the little white specks that you see in the dirt. Um, so for now, we're going to be seeing some of that in the dirt. But once these annuals go in, they will cover it all up. And annuals really need fresh, good soil to go into. And for us, we have some pretty crummy soil here. We have really hard clay, um, shrubs and hydrangeas, things like that. They can go into that dirt and you can kind of amend the hole. But annuals and even some of our perennials really need that rich uh, compost soil. So we brought in some fresh soil and there is drip under here. So we're going to be adjusting that a little bit so we make sure it gets to the plants. Um, and we're just going to be planting the annuals right in here. And I think this is going to make for a really pretty show. It's going to allow for the annuals roots to really uh, get into the ground. Um, and we hopefully won't struggle with needing to give them as much water. So let's talk about what we've got here. Uh, I wanna talk about the annual of the year first from Proven Winners. This is Truffula Pink Gumfrina, and we've got five of them here, and it's a really fun, whimsical little plant. Uh, usually when you get them, they have you know about this many stalks, and it is pretty, but we planted some of these last year, and we planted them pretty close, and it went wild. Um, we fertilize it every week, just like we do our other annuals, and it was a beast of a plant. No deadheading. Um, so we've got five of them here, and I'm imagining this is just gonna fill out this space really nicely, give us some height, give us some whimsy, um, and right in front of these daisies, it's gonna be a really nice pop. Uh, back here, we've got my personal favorite, Coleus. This is Golden Dreams Coleus. And this is great for sun or shade. It will get somewhere between three to four feet tall, depending on water, sun, all the conditions. Um, we planted this last year as well, and it was also a beast of a plant. The leaves on this will get really, really big. And the interesting thing to note is that when this is in more sun, it's got this red veining, which is really pretty. But in the shade, and you can kind of see down here, it will take on more of this green color. 
So it really can look different depending on uh, the conditions that you give it. So we've got five of these as well that we're gonna be popping in. Um, and you can tell we're kind of color blocking here to the back, um, but in the front, we've got a nice little pattern going on. So the first one I've got here is Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo. Uh, this is a really, really beautiful uh, Supertunia. The Mini Vistas have more of a mounding habit and they will grow in sort of a ball shape or the regular vistas will kind of sprawl and go out. This will still be uh, pretty vigorous, but it's gonna grow more compact. And the nice thing about this one, I don't see any yet, but as once we get this in the ground, the older blooms will age to like a lighter purple. So you get kind of like a sparkly effect, which is really great. Next to that, we've got Superbina Peachy Keen. Look at that another sparkly one so this is kind of dark orange when it comes out and then it ages to this light peachy apricot color it's going to play off nicely with the supertunia and then next up we've got snow princess alyssum now this is you may also know this as lobularia this is something that we often see like fall early spring uh, but we grew some of this in a container last year, and it really liked our climate here, which I was surprised by. So we're going to try this in the ground this year. This is one that you got to keep moist. Um, this one really likes to be moist. If it does dry out, it can be a little bit hard to bring it back. Um, the other thing is, and this is why I'm tentative with this one, the heat can do a number on this one, which is why I say you see it more... Uh, spring fall time so we'll see on this one um the alyssums there is a princess line of alyssum and there is a night line of alyssum the princess tend to have a little bit bigger flowers more of like a sprawly kind of bloom and the night has a more tight bunched up uh flower depends on what you're going for for in the ground we wanted something that's a little bit bolder of a flower so we've got snow princess and then the last one, let me get this one because we got a lot of blooms. Okay, so the fourth plant we have in our ring here is Supertunia Honey. And this one is really cool because as the blooms age, you get a lot of different colors. And with the temperature variation as well, you get different colors. So in the fall and when we have more cooler temperatures, you'll see a lot of this red. And then when they first come out, they are uh, quite yellow. Uh, but there is not a single one on here that is completely yellow, which I think is kind of fun. Um, so this will go nicely with uh, the peachy keen. They'll play off each other really well. So the berm is going to be really important for keeping our annuals moist, um, especially the alyssum. And even the superbina really needs to stay moist. And so this uh, raised bed mix that we brought in is going to help to encourage the annuals to drink up water, hold that moisture, um, and it's going to feed them really well. Now, I know that I showed you some plants back here that are not in the berm, and there is a reason for that. These are quite vigorous and they're also taller so we put them a little bit ways back um, now we may add some things to the hole to kind of amend uh, but we have not had any issues with these taking off in our garden before because they are so vigorous um, so i think that is the berm what we're going to add here is some slow release fertilizer before we do any planting um, so we're using osmocote today as long as you're using something to feed your annuals they will love it. They need that consistent food so that they will flower for you. Um, we'll water these in and then I'll come back once a week with water soluble fertilizer as well. So I think that is it and we can get to planting.
All right, so we got all those annuals planted and that was super easy planting in this raised bed mix. I mean, didn't even need the auger. I just spread the soil back, popped them in and pushed the soil up around them. So easy. I wish everything was like that. I mean, we'd be done in a jiffy. Um, but then we got the gomfrina in and the coleus. And then we even popped in um, a couple of uh, sweet potato vines. So this is the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime, I think. Um, it's got the really nice heart-shaped leaves on it. Bright green foliage and it looks like we left it really barren around, but the potato vines get huge in the ground for us. Um, we planted some like in line with petunias a couple of years ago, and we were out here twice a week by July, like shearing on that thing. So we wanted to give it some space to fill in, but potato vines are a really great filler. It's gonna be a nice chartreuse pop that will match the chartreuse on the loose nepeta that we've got over here. And then the coleus are gonna be some really nice foliage interest. Um, we've got another potato vine over here. And then the perennials are just gonna keep on going all summer. So our goal for this is for it to be a big, bold, beautiful meadow. And I would say that we are well on our way. Um, so you'll notice there are still a few pockets. Um, the annuals will fill in really nicely, but we do have some other perennials planned for this bed that of course we will share with you in other videos. Uh, but we're just going to keep on adding color all summer and it's going to be fun. Now you'll notice that we do need to come in here and put in um, a nice new edge for the summer. Brian's got a little half moon edger so he'll come around with that and the grass has just kind of grown in and that's natural. It happens over time and we've also not been working in the garden consistently with everything that's been going on in our life. So we'll clean that up and it'll look nice and fresh and then the annuals will fill in and this is just gonna be an amazing colorful border. All right, that is it for the shed bed. Now we're gonna head out front and plant some more annuals. Come on. All right guys, we're in our front garden now and we're gonna plant up our border. Um, so you probably saw us at the beginning of this video tearing out those violas that we planted last fall. I think we planted 100, 150. Um, and we always get comments whenever we go to pull those out this time of year, like, that's so wasteful. Why are you pulling those out? They're beautiful. Um, and we're a little bit later this year, so you could really see how they're just kind of languishing. And once we get into the heat, they really get leggy. Um, so for us here in the South, they are more of a fall winter crop. And then in the summer, we go in with our annuals, petunias, um, things like that. So we pulled those out and I did dig up the Dusty Miller as well because we wanted to try to save that. And we're gonna be going in with some gorgeous purple and yellow. So we've got two new to us plants here. So I've got first the Artist Blue Ageratum. Now we grew Ageratum from seed last year. Um, it was a different variety. It was a tall variety, but this one is short. So it's perfect for borders. Um, and you'll get this nice blue purpley color all summer long. Um, it's really great for southern gardens and no deadheading required. Uh, this is going to be a really nice touch and I can't wait to see how this does for us um, up here in the front. Second, we've got a gorgeous yellow petunia. Now, we really wanted to get the mini vista yellow this year because it's brand new, uh, but we're a little late and so we had a hard time finding it, but we found this gorgeous yellow petunia. This is called Yellowstone Forever, um, and this one is really pretty. Uh, this is probably, at least in person, the most yellow petunia we've seen. And I know that they're in these giant buckets, but if you look inside, there's actually two plants. So we're gonna do a little bit of extra work and separate these um, so that we can have alternating color here along the border. Um, both of these will take regular fertilization really well. So we'll go in with our slow release Osmocote fertilizer, and then I'll come back once a week with our water soluble fertilizer. And just like we have in our shed bed, we've come along with the raised bed mix up here. And we do have drip in this bed already. Um, we've planted annuals a lot up here. So the soil is somewhat better, uh, but we still wanted to add in that raised bed mix just to give us a little bit more help this year. Uh, so. We're going to get to planting and it uh, should be a beautiful show.
All right, so we've got all of the annuals that we'll be planting today in the ground, and they're looking so pretty. We planted so many of them, and I just think that annuals are such a fun way to change things up in the garden. There's always something fresh every single year, and I just think it's a really creative way to approach things. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's our number one piece of advice is if you love shrubs, if you love perennials, go for it, yeah. but our advice is save space for annuals because it really can help to change up your garden every single year whether it's a border or a little pocket inside of your bed somewhere, you can really make an impact with annuals. And they often give you color all season long without much additional work. Yeah, and you can see here, we've got such a wide variety of different things in the garden, different plants, different textures, different colors. So it's just a really, really fun way to change things up. Uh, I also wanted to point out this bowl right here, which you probably <laughs> saw a lot as we were planting up here, also needs to be refreshed. So we planted that bowl to go along with our violas that were up here last fall. So we'll be updating that planter a little bit later on, but we've done a lot of work today, so I think that is going to be it for this video. Yeah, we are gonna go and water all of these plants in and make sure they're super happy in their new home. And we've got lots of annuals still to plant this year. There's so much garden content to come and we're super excited about it. If you guys like this video, be sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Happy Pride Month.